Hey gang, welcome back to our DIY series. Today we're building these plant stands for my daughter. She found a picture of one online and asked me if I could make some for her. I said, sure, we can knock that out. So we, we made these three. These two are similar process. This one's a little different. And it all comes down to this base right here holding the plant up. This is a little more complicated to make. And this one's much simpler and you don't need as many power tools. So make sure you watch the whole video and check out how we did this one. So let's go outside and show you what you need. So we've set up everything that you're going to need right here on this table. Now we have our table saw and our chop saw, but we're going to show you an alternate method so that if you don't have these, you can still build these plant stones. So we have those. Then we have five pieces of one and a half by one and a half by 32 poplar. We got these from Home Depot. They have them in big boxes at our local store uh, on the lumber aisle next to all, all the stair parts. These were $3.88 a piece. Um, we're using poplar just because it was available and this is nice stock. I mean, look how square it is and straight. If you don't want to use poplar, you can buy these. This is called a turning square or a turning blank which means it's for lathe work. You could put this in a lathe and make all kind of stuff out of it. But if you do a, an internet search on turning squares or turning blanks, you can get these in all kinds of species. Beautiful purple heart, zebra wood, and it's expensive, but it would make a beautiful plant stand with a clear coat on it. And we're gonna, we're gonna make these with no, um, uh, no nails, and no exposed fasteners. Right, you can practice on the poplar and then when you get comfortable, sure. graduate to the expensive stuff. Sure. So five pieces of that. And then here's our, here are our dowels. They were actually out of the packs that just had the dowels only, so we bought this one that includes the drill bit and then this hardware, which we will not need. So five 16 inch dowels. And then we have a self-centering doweling jig. The self-centering feature makes it very easy to do what we're gonna do. Uh, but on, in the same hour they sold these and the same display on the end cap, they had a kind of a, an upgrade pack and it has a doweling drill jig on it. Not the self-centering type. Now you can still make it work. So we're gonna use that. Then we're gonna need a pocket hole jig. This is mine that I bought a long time ago. It's a Craig jig. Uh, now you can buy just simple ones uh, made of plastic. And we have inch and a half screws for softwoods. We've got a square drive bit in our drill, in our impact driver rather. And then in our, for our drill, here's our step drill for our pocket hole jig. And then we have a 532nd bit. We'll show you what that's for. A nice pencil, square. I think we're ready to go. Yes, sir. So we have our five pieces. The first step is to take one of them and we're gonna cut it in half. So we used our cross-cut sled on our table saw. You can just buy a cheap plastic miter box at the home center with a handsaw and do that. You don't need that. So the finished length on these is gonna be 10 and a half. But we're gonna make the half lap first while they're at 16. It just gives us a little more room on there to hold the wood. I'd rather work with a longer piece of wood than a shorter piece of wood. Does that, that make sense? So we know these are 16, eight is the middle. These are an inch and a half. So I'm just gonna go three quarter to one side. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw a line. I don't really need to. And I'm gonna put that there. So that is square to each other. Take a utility knife, make a mark there mark there try to get underneath and there now let's make those a little deeper huh mm -hmm. so I use the actual piece of wood to determine the width so let's cut these on the table saw we're going to cut the half lap on the table saw so for that half lap joint we want to remove half of this and we're not going to measure 
we're gonna let the table saw tell us what to do. And this is another reason for leaving these long. So watch what I'm gonna do. Make a cut, and I'm gonna flip it over. So just based on that, what do we have to do to the blade? Raise it Raise a little bit. Just a little bit. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna fine tune this until we cut one side, flip it and cut the other, and there is zero waste in between. So I love my saw stop, but it's very hard to get a fine adjust with this because one crank of this turns the blade or raises the blade full height. So I'm just gonna try to bump it just the tiniest of the tiniest bit. Yep. All right, let's try it again. That's pretty good. Now you don't want to be too deep either, but that's the idea. So I'm just going to transfer that knife line to the to the edge of the board so I can see it. Here comes the rain, bud. I right, starting to rain here, so I'm going to speak up a little bit. So I use my knife to transfer this line to the front. So, so I could see it, but then I darkened it with a pencil and I'm gonna cut I'm gonna cut in between those lines and then I'm gonna sneak up on my final width and again the ends don't matter yet We're gonna cut that to length after we make the half lap Nice. And our depth is perfect. <laughs> so there's our finished cross piece made with the table saw and the cross cut sled. So if you don't have a cross cut sled, just use your miter gauge. That comes with the table saw. If you don't have a table saw, we're going to show you another way with a circular saw and a chisel. So we have these two pieces of scrap. We have them clamped together. We've got another piece of scrap. We're gonna get it square like that to these two pieces of wood. I'm just gonna mark it on either side with a pencil. Now we're gonna remove, remove the wood between the two pencil lines with a circular saw. And I'm set to half the depth. This is an inch and a half and I just measured three quarter on my depth right here. Does that make sense? So my first cut, I want to just split that pencil line in half. And I want to cut the other one. So the cut's in the middle, I don't need to square anymore. do that these most of this will just break out just like that yeah, kind of a thick piece there in the middle so I'm gonna use the chisel to help me out this is uh, a chisel for my set but you can just buy I think that's a one inch wide chisel you can just buy one chisel if you want you don't have to buy a whole set so now let's clean this up it around work away from me all right that's looking pretty good let's take the clamp off 
and I'm gonna do it like this and push down. Get the cuts a little deep. So just practice on some straps until you get it right. So that's the idea. We wanted to show you an alternate method of making a half lap if you don't have a table saw. The circular saw and chisel works okay, but this works great. And make sure you stay tuned in this video because we're going to show you another way to make this plant stand without making a half lap at all. Let's keep going on this build with the one we made with the table saw. So our next step is we want to cut these to our length which is ten and a half. So we know this is one and a half so we're going to make a cut at four and a half. If we make a cut at four and a half there and four and a half there, four and a half and four and a half is nine plus an inch and a half is ten and a half. We're just going to turn it and make our cuts, make four cuts at four and a half. All right, now it's time to attach our plant base to our four legs. Now we've already established that we want this particular plant to be 10 inches off the ground. So it'll be 10 inches from the base of the leg to the top of here. Now on yours, you can make it whatever you want. Make the width of this whatever you want and the height here whatever you want and the height of this, whatever you want. That's the beauty of DIYs, custom build, right? So here's our four legs. I'm gonna square up the ends like this. Perfect, right? I'm gonna make a mark at 10 inches and then transfer that mark across all four legs. Just like that. Now that line represents the top of the base where our plant will sit. Now I think what I'm going to do right now is take the time to number these. One, two, three, and four. And correspondingly here, one, two, three, and four. And then I like this as the top. So I'm just going to label this with a B for the bottom. Now let's go over here. We're going to actually dowel that and pocket screw it into the legs. So here's our self-centering dowel jig. We've got the bit that came with the dowels and the depth stop on there. This is a 5 16th bit, 5 16th inch dowels. And I made a mark on there that's a little more than halfway right there. So you see my depth stop over here by my thumb, Oop. sorry, right there. So now I'm going to tighten that depth stop onto the drill bit and that'll prevent us from over drilling. All right, so can you see we have our depth stop set for a little more than half the depth of the dowel. Now if you don't have one of these, you don't need it. Just wrap a piece of tape around the drill bit to act as your depth stop. So we want our dial to be half an inch below here. It's just an easy number to remember. It's not critical. And on our dial jig, can you see these lines in here? Are they showing up? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this line is at the center of the 5 16th hole we're drilling. See that? And then this line right here is at the center of the half inch hole. So they, get, they make this window on the side and you can peek in there and center that line up with your mark. Just like that. Now I'm tight and I'm centered. Now to duplicate that on all the other three, I'm gonna take my combination square and the blade is against the wood and the square head is against this aluminum part on the jig. And now I'm locked in and I can transfer that to all four. So let's drill this one, and then we'll drill the other three. All right, there's one dowel hole 
in each leg of our base, each end. Now we're going to make our mark in our leg. So this was half an inch. The center of this hole is half an inch down from here. So now we're going to come half an inch down from our pencil line and drill the other half of that hole. This half an inch. So there's our line for our dowel. I'm going to place the jig over it. Center it up lock it in place and again I'm going to use my combination square right here and now I use this as a depth stop on all the legs and the dowel hole will be exactly in the same spot and I don't need to measure anything so let's drill these four all right that's our last hole for the dowels now let's drill a pocket hole on the bottom side of our plant base to attach everything together. We have our pocket hole jig set up and make sure we drill on the bottom so you don't see them. And this isn't critical, not like the dowels. So I'm just eyeballing the middle right here. All right, that was quick. Nice. Now let's put our four dowels in here and we can put this thing together. And we're not going to glue this. That's more for alignment. It's easy to take apart when you want to finish it or stain it. Let's come over here. we got our drill. Four screws. So we're using one and a half inch pocket hole screws for soft woods. I'm just going to put it together like that. And then this pocket screw will lock it in place. That. Very strong. All right. That's basically it. Let's check it out. Nice. You see that? There's no exposed fasteners. Very cool. Yeah. A lot of the times, the ones that you buy from the store that I've seen, you can see the nails. Sometimes big, they just end nail right here. Or a big screw. Big right screw. There. Yeah. But this is clean, and you don't see any fasteners. Look at that. Woo! So now we can determine the height of these. What do you think, Jordan? I'm thinking, I like it when it just comes right above the pot. Yep. So I'm thinking maybe like 17. All right. And make a mark. And let's go to the table saw and cut it. All right. All right, that was easy. Now we have enough where we can make another one. I was just about to say, it's an efficient project. It is. All the scraps you can reuse. So our next step, we're going to just screw the half lap together. This is the last step. Yep. If you're not finishing it. Yep. So I'm just going to roughly find the middle. It's not that important. Just connect the corners. We're going to drill a pilot hole. This is a 532nd bit. Not too deep, just halfway. And then we're actually just going to use, I don't know where to go. We're actually just going to use a pocket screw, the same screws you used here. There's no need to buy another, a different screw. Just like that. Ooh. Now, if that bugs you, you could use a flathead screw and countersink it. That can't do a little bit, but that is it. Dang. And it's strong too. You got good sand on it? That's probably good, huh? Yes. Nice and strong. Yeah. Let's put the plan on it and check it out. Okay. Hey. Sweet. Now we'll sand this right here, but you could you could bevel that. We even talked about like a decorative cap, but you could do anything you want. And then on the bottom, you could put a foot on there if you wanted to, to protect your floor. A little rubber this, foot. But this is fine. Mm -hmm. yep. That one's done. 
So now we're going to show you the alternate method to do this. It's probably the easiest. So let's show you what we did. So these two are going to form the base for our plant. And these two blocks are going to go like that. And then the plant will sit on there like that. It looks kind of cool because this is open. Yeah. Gives it a lighter appearance. Sure. Um, if, it, if it were solid like that, that looks too clunky or too chunky, whatever you want to call it, right? So let's, we're going to drill three holes in this piece to attach these two blocks and this. And the beauty here is you're going to use the same step drill that came with your pocket screws so you don't need a different drill bit or even different screws so i've flipped, i've already determined this is the bottom i'm just coming in coming in an inch from each edge and then i need to find the center so it's going to be five and an eighth and here's a way to find the middle of a board again using your combination square I just estimated halfway. We'll make a mark that way. And I'm going to make a mark that way. So I know the, the center is in the middle of those two marks. It works the same if you go too far. So now I'm more than halfway right here. I make a mark, spin it, and make a mark. Now I know the center is in, in the middle of those, just like that. Let's drill those. So we put a piece of blue tape. So it's three quarters of an inch from heat, from the step in the step drill. This is called a step drill. Three quarters of an inch from here to the tape. Let's drill these three. Now, now let's attach our blocks. Now normally I would glue this, but my glue is in the truck, so we're just going to put one screw in it. Flush those up right there. Perfect. Nice. Yep. It almost looks like one piece of wood. Yep. And now we'll put this one there. We'll get it centered and squared. Let's see how we're going to do that. Just like that. Yeah. So that's square, let's see, four and a quarter, four and seven sixteenths, come back a little bit, four and, what's that, four and, let's go four and three eighths, okay, four and three eighths, right there, check square again, perfect, and we'll put a screw in the middle. So that's our alternate method to how to do it without a half lap joint. Just three screws. Yep. We made our own. So this is a this is called a full lap. Where the boards just go by each other. That one's a half lap. Well let using the same method on that one, let's dowel this thing up and show them what it looks like when it's all finished. Perfect. Let's get it done. So this plant stand is gonna be a little taller. So we can't use our little trick here to establish where to put the doweling jig. So here's what we did. This line is the top of our platform. And then this line is the center line of our dowel. It's half an inch down. So we came over here. So from this end of the doweling jig to the middle of the hole we're using is three and a quarter. So we made this line at three and a quarter from here. So if we line the doweling jig up on the line here, this hole will always be the same distance. Yes, sir. Let's clamp that and drill those four holes. All right, so a quick little tip. So this drill bit is made for this hole. But if you're a little nervous and you're afraid you're going to put it here or here by mistake, just get yourself a piece of blue tape. 
and do that. That way you can't screw it up. All right, gang, made a little mistake in drilling for the dowels, but we're going to fix it. So these two pieces are going to overlap. So all we're going to do to correct our mistake is to chop these off there and there. Let's see what we did. We made them like that, like we were doing the half lap. Right. But it's going to go like this. No big deal. We'll just cut that off. But if you're doing this method, just plan for that. If you wanted to drill the dowels in the correct spot, then you would just need to move the second set of dowel holes up the width of one of these boards. Right, exactly. Or if you wanted to do it this way, which might be easier in the it, long run. I think it is. And you just make two similar ones and cut it off like this. Make them long. And make, yeah, yeah make up the difference. Yeah. All right, cool. All right, so there's our version number two with, without a half lap. It looks great, I think. A little bit about, we were talking about customizing it for your own taste and needs. So this one, we made the legs below the top of the pot. And here they're a little bit taller. So again, totally customizable depending on whatever you want to do. Right. Hey gang, that's going to be a wrap on our plant stand video. And even though it's a plant stand video, we always try to teach you tips and tricks that we use that you can apply to your own project at your house. And that's what we really try to do here. Tips and tricks on measuring and drilling and cutting. But this came out great. It was super fun really inexpensive. They tell me these are pretty pricey in the stores. And what the beauty of this is, you can totally customize it. Whatever width you want, whatever height you want here, here, different species of wood, you can paint them, you can stain them, whatever you want. So if you like the video, please consider smashing that like button for us. Consider subscribing if you haven't already, we're coming up on 10,000. If there's any questions you have about the tools or techniques we use, drop us a comment below. We'll be sure we try to answer those for you. And we have a lot more DIY projects in the works. We really love doing these things. So be patient with us as we fine tune our process on showing you how we do things, especially out in the, in the rain here in Southern Louisiana. So with all that said, we'll see you on the next one.